<laughs> Does anybody ever have a problem with forgetfulness? Not this group, right? Nobody's forgetful. Nobody, right? Man, why is a preacher preaching about something that bugs the heck out of me, right? I can't remember dates. I can't remember names. I can't remember the person I met yesterday. I shake hands with somebody, on it, and I can't remember their name. Who has that problem? Yeah, it bothers us, doesn't it? I, I, I've got a joke on that one this morning. Uh, husband and wife, been married a few years and getting up in their years, nobody like that here. And they go to the doctor because they're concerned about their memories. Okay, they're, they're kind of starting to drift away at times. And so they go in and see the doctor. And the doctor says, well, I don't think you're that bad, but if you're so concerned about it, why don't you start writing things down? If you write things down, then you'll have you know, record, and you can go back and, and see. So, so that night, there, and his wife's sitting there watching TV, and he says, honey, I think we ought to have some ice cream. I think I'll go to the kitchen and, and make us bowl of ice cream. She says, she says to him, you better write that down, because what the doctor said. So I can remember that. She said, yeah, but I want strawberries on it. You better write that down. He said, I can remember that. Yeah, but don't leave off the whipped cream. I want the whipped cream on it, too. Don't, don't forget that. You better write it down. He says, I can remember all that. Don't worry about it. So he goes off to the kitchen, and he's gone for quite a while. <laughs> he comes back a little bit with, with a plate of bacon and eggs, hands it to his wife, and she said, where's the toast? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're a little bit like that, aren't we? You know, what day is it? I don't know. Um, I find that each day gets a little bit more serious. Did, did you know that last Sunday, and I forgot to mention this, was, was, uh, was I National I Forgot Day? Do you know there's a day that is that National I Forgot Day, and it was, it was, it's actually July 2nd? I didn't know that. Actually, I didn't discover that till this week, and I was working on, on my message this morning, but there is a National I Forgot Day, and it, maybe it, you know, it serves three purposes. I don't know. It's, um, maybe, they, maybe one we can just admit we forget. That's one purpose. That's who we are. Maybe it's a day where you can go back and send a card to somebody that, that says, I forgot to send you a card last year, and I was intended to, but I forgot. I, I don't know, maybe that, that's what it's for, but I didn't realize we even had that day, and, and I'll probably forget that by next year. But, <laughs> I, and I thought this, was, this one was good, too. <laughs> I changed my password to incorrect, so whenever I forgot it, the computer will say your, your password is incorrect. <laughs> you got to think about that one a little bit, right? <laughs> So how many of you are going to go back and put, what did the preacher say I should make that password? <laughs> so write it down. Okay, write it down now. I'll give you this pen that erases if you want. Um, <laughs> but we all have a little bit of trouble with memory. God knows we do too. God has that. And, and God um, has some instructions on remembrance throughout Scripture. If you go and you know, look, and you'll find remembering being told. And even the Jewish people, that was one of the things that they were good at. They, they would remember, and, and you know, they passed on traditions and festivals and feasts and, and passed them on from one generation to another. And they didn't, you know, didn't even have ways early on to write it down, but it came orally, and those traditions were handed down one to another. And this one of the traditions, one of the remembrances this morning comes to us in Joshua chapter 4. After they've crossed over the Jordan River, they've come to safety, they've gotten to the other side, and they get there, and the first thing that God tells Joshua to do is to remember. So let's pause and, and have a word of prayer to guide us through this. God, uh, we've had a little fun with this, and as we know, this is one of the things that almost gets us day by day, almost any age. And Lord, we, we want to remember this morning what you have, how the song said it all, of your faithfulness. Faithful in the past, faithful today, and, and we can look forward to that tomorrow. Lord, I pray throughout this message that that ringing, rings true and strong to us this morning through your word. Amen. Um, the book of Joshua is where we're at. Chapter 4, Memorial Stones from the Jordan. 
Memorial Stones from the Jordan. It's, it's where they, they finally had made it across. And think about it, where they'd come from, how long it had been since they were in. She has special permission to leave, by the way. She, she asked for it and it was given to her. <laughs> um, the, and this had gone over 40 years, okay? They, they were in slavery when it first began, and, and then all those people had died out except for Joshua and Caleb. And the people had, some of them were now close to 40 years old and all the way down through the ages, and they'd been dreaming about this day and looking forward in anticipation of this day when they would grab into the new land. They knew there was still going to be a lot ahead of them, but they had made it that far in the journey. And God said, it's like God says, you know, let's take a time out. Let's stop for a moment. Let's, let's just remember what, what has happened. I think in our nation today, Thanksgiving is one of those days, isn't it? Uh, we, it's, it's the one day during the year that families gather around the table. We're anticipating that big meal that we're going to eat and then sleep on the couch. And, but we do. Our prayer is one of thanksgiving. Thanks be to God for the bounty, the, the goodness, the times, the, the places, the things, all that, all that it's occurred over the past days, weeks, months, leading up to that point. And we do sincerely, I think, come before God. But this is more important than that. God said, make it be a memorial. Make it be a memorial. Maybe now let's transform in that think about Memorial Day. We had a Memorial Day service over here, and we remembered in front of the, the, the stones that are around the cemetery, all those who had served our country, even those who had given the supreme sacrifice for you and I to have our freedom, and we celebrated those men and women who had served our nation so very well. Memorial Day. That's what we do. And then we have expanded that in our own traditions in this country also to include decorating the, the, the gravesides to all those even mo mothers, fathers, children that have passed on. And we remember them. Tears are shed. Laughter is had. There's all those remembrances are, are good things that we have. And I think it's good to remember, isn't it? You like to remember, you like to look back and kind of rehash old times and... Um, and, and do that. But this is so, so much more than that. Um, it says in Joshua 14, moving ahead a few verses, in verse 14 of chapter 4, it says, that day, now we think about this day that the Lord has stopped everything, and it says, that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the, in the sight of all of Israel. He praised Joshua, because Joshua had done what he had been told. He had been obedient to God. He praised Joshua. And then all the people, they all revered him all the days of his life, just as they had revered Moses. Joshua was looked at as a great leader, a great man of God, because of what? Because of what? And I think it goes back to this. And I hope men and women, we, we can be like this too. Because going through, crossing Jordans, going through life, it takes what Joshua was first instructed to do in chapter 1, be strong and courageous. Because it's a tough world out there. Anybody encountered that world that I've also encountered? Yeah, it's a tough world out there. This afternoon may not be easy. It's a difficult world out there, so be strong and courageous. But here's how you do it. He said, be careful then, Joshua. And this is why Joshua was praised by God, extolled by the people, and lifted up. Because... He was careful to obey the law. Don't turn, don't get wishy-washy on the law. Don't say, well, it can be this way, kind of drift this way or another, left or right, whatever it might, might be. He said, if you stay true to it, you'll be successful wherever you go. Do not even let it depart from your mouth. So speak it. Tell it. Don't just, you don't have to be like the preacher and be up front and, and, and preach it all the time. Just make it who you are. Let it come out of your mouth. Meditate on it. Study it. Learn it. Because then it's going to be in your body, mind, and soul, your heart, every place. Then you'll be careful. You'll be careful. You'll cautiously do it. And it'll, it'll be important to you. It'll, it'll matter in your life. You'll be careless with it. When you do all that, things will be prosperous and successful. Now, he didn't say 
you know, you're going to have your coffers are going to be filled and all that. And there won't be some difficulty ahead, but you'll, you'll make it through all that. And that's where Joshua was at as we began this chapter 4. We had to remember that. They'd come through the Jordan, the, just like God had said they would. He, first God, if you remember, he had instructed the priests to go, be, go ahead of them, take the ark ahead of them. People would follow that. He told the, the priest then to go to the shore and do that. You know, then God opened the, opened the waters and all the people passed through. God said, now, let's remember. Let's remember. What did God want them to remember? To look back and always remember where God had been faithful to them. I'm going to ask you some questions about where God has been faithful to you in a little bit, but start thinking about that. Start, start thinking about that this morning. Let's, here we are in the book of Joshua, chapter 4. Or no, let's, let's... No, I decided to stop here for a moment. Um, I'm going to go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah is such, such a, a great book of the Bible, a great prophet of Isaiah. Now, he, he uh, was a prophet, a man of God, sometime after this, and he served as a prophet of God, the, one, the, the spokesman for God in a very difficult time when most of the kings were a mess. Hezekiah had a, a brief reign in there where it wasn't bad. People weren't listening to him. People were, were disregarding everything God had instructed Isaiah to, to share with them. But this, and this is one of those statements where um, through Isaiah was spoken. He says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. Israel, who formed you, says, Do not be afraid. And this is as they stand on the other side of the river. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. As we said in this morning, you are my children. I love you. When you do go through those deep waters that they just encountered, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And God always reminds us when we go through those waters, those difficult times, that I will always be with you. Where these verses were reminded me was by Teresa. She, uh, a few years ago when... Um, we were at Lagodi. She took on a, a short-term, a couple of years, actually. It seemed like a whole lot longer than that for her as our youth leader. Our youth leader had been recruited by a, one of the, the church camps and gone to, to direct that, and all of a sudden we were without a youth leader. So I looked at Teresa one day, and I said, is that supposed to be you? And she says, I think it is. And she counted on these verses going through the deep waters and the fires and all that with those kids for a couple of years. And... Um, um, that God was going to be faithful to her in doing so. And one of the fruits of that will be these young people that you'll see up here next week. Because they came into doing that while Teresa was a youth leader. And she's not here, so I could talk about that this morning. But I'm so thankful that she trusted God in those difficult times of, of leading teenagers, which isn't, some of you who've done that know it gets messy at times. But it's all worth it, and you'll see how much it's worth it next week. The God, our Savior, the Lord God of Israel, is our God today who is faithful to us today. Okay. Um, so we, we looked this morning at this chapter of Isaiah. I read some of those. I'll read you some of those a little bit more. But we want to remember all that God has done. Reminder then that in your life, God has done so much on your behalf and continues to do that. And God said in verse 7 that these stones that we erected and will be a memorial that will stand forever for what God has done. Okay, now we go to chapter 4. So when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord then said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe. So there were twelve tribes. So every, it was equal representation amongst all the people. It's important. Everybody, everybody was represented in that. Um, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan from right where the priests are standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So you got a middle picture of that? 12 tribes, one person was taken from each one of the tribes of all these million plus people to pick up something to memorialize this journey, to remember this journey by. When we go on a trip someplace, one of the things you often do is pick up what? A souvenir or some kind of memorial. Me Megan, you remember when we went to Washington, D.C. in 93 or 4, we picked up a little souvenir of the Capitol, of the uh, whatever. We finally sold them at a yard sale years ago. But, but 
we, we picked up, you pick up some little memorial, something from, from wherever you've been to remind you. And so they picked up something to remind them of that journey. So we don't forget. And then as we go back, let me, let me finish that statement. So, uh, and tell them to take up the 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan from right where the priests are standing and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So take them with you, take them along. It moves on to say in verse 6, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, remember they're going to teach their children, in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them. And that's important to, to the church today. It was important to the Hebrew people at that time to tell, to speak, to, to, to let them know to tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Only God can do that. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And then these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Of God's faithfulness, of God's deliverance. And this is, this is a, not just delivering, not just proof of God delivering people from... <coughs> You know, like, I'm going to go from point A to point B. Not like they got a map quest and said, all right, let's map out the journey from, from Egypt to Israel, and when we get there, we'll go, woohoo. No, this is a deliverance of people from slavery in Egypt to freedom in God's land. What's that? What's that? What, what, what do we have to, con to have that today? What, what's that today? What, what's our memorial today of God's faithfulness? We have this, don't we? Of the cross. Today we have this. It says, to, for us today, that's the cross. That's, that's what God freed us from slavery to sin and death and delivered us to hope and a future, to a new place to live, to a new place to be. We've come through through Christ. We've survived through Christ. We have been made fresh and new and whole through Christ. And Paul said that in 1 Corinthians 1.18, not everybody's going to buy into that. He said, this message of the cross, that's foolishness for those who are perishing, but those who are saved, that's only something only God can do. That's the power of God. And if you go back and look at, at those memorials, those stones, that was to prove to the people, to, to remind the people, that's the power of God that separated the waters and brought us to freedom. Delivered us from where we were, from slavery to freedom. The cross delivers us from slavery to sin and death to freedom of living and life and eternity. We have that memorial too. We have that reminder. Memorials are important. Remembering is important. Jesus told us to remember what he has done for us. He did this. Chapter 4, verse 24, so he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the, the hand of the Lord is powerful. Now let's go back and look at this again. This is Old Testament to New Testament. The Lord is power. It's the power of God. Joshua, the Lord is powerful. And so that you might always fear the Lord your God. We've left out that last statement all too often. We need to fear him as well as we trust him. Fear Fear not having Him. Trust in Him with all things. So we remember what God has done. I, I said I would ask you, some. what are some stones of remembrance in your life? You've got a few moments. You think back, what's your conversion story? When did you come before the Lord? Maybe you're thinking this through. What was your calling? Some of you were called to be, what, teachers? Leaders. But nobody ever thought they were called to be a staff parish chairperson. Barb's not here this morning. She's our staff parish chairperson. That's not a calling anybody ever wants in a church, typically in the Methodist church. <laughs> but we've called to be many things. And my calling was, as I went into ministry close to 20 years ago, was I knew it was all something that only God could do as he laid that upon my heart. Do you have favorite scriptures that are reminders to you of God's presence? I know I do. I've got a bunch of them. 
that remind me day by day where God is at. God's my refuge and my strength, my ever-present help in my time of need. Therefore, I will not fear. That one encourages me almost every day. And then sometimes he tells me to just shut up, be still, know that I'm God. <laughs> you know, all those things are reminders that when those scriptures come to mind. There's another one I love so much I've repeated. In Matthew 11, 28, Jesus says, just come to me. You've messed up enough, just come to me. There's some favorite hymns. Teresa would say, great is thy faithfulness, as we sang this morning. What's your favorite hymns? What's the hymns you picked out to be played at your funeral? <laughs> What's your favorite hymns? <laughs> Maybe that's not a pleasant thought, but it's something many people have thought of. Those favorite hymns of yours. Who are some special teachers that you've had along your journey that, that reminded you that God loves you? Maybe it was in Sunday school or Bible school in years gone by. Instead of encourages in the faith, who are those who has encouraged you in your faith along life's journey? It might be some people you would have least thought of that, have, that, that you've been an encourager to or someone who has encouraged you. Can you think of a time where God healed you? Testimony this morning. Teresa did that four years ago today. Josette's family's counted upon healing for Paul this morning, but that healing is going to come in the next life. Time where God answered you. Yeah, he does answer our prayers. It may not in the timing we wanted. Time where God comforted you. Time where God snuck up on you sometime and, and uh, surprised you. Because God is, I've preached a sermon on God always being there. Of God's promise. Of God's presence with you. How God acted at some point in time and you look back. I, I've looked back and I share this. It came um, when I was a junior in high school. Yeah, that was a time. I, I mentioned Teresa's father earlier in our prayer time who's having a lot of transition in his life. I'm, I'm so thankful for her father day by day because when I was a junior in high school, her father accepted the, the role as principal of my high school. Now, the big high school that it was in Otwell, Indiana, but he accepted that role. It was only there one year. One year was he my high school principal. But in that one year, I learned that he had a daughter. She didn't attend the school I went to. But I learned that he had a daughter. Her name was Teresa. And because he was my principal, I decided it would be nice to get acquainted with, I don't know, I, I thought she was cute. But, but uh, I became acquainted with his daughter and we started dating and we've been married now 42 years. So I think that was God's hand at work. He was only there one year and then he moved on to Winslow and then Pike Central. But I think that's how God worked in that situation. And I was blessed because of it. And so thankful to look back and remember that. God promises to you his love, his presence, his guidance, his hope, his future. Doesn't promise us the rose garden that we might like, the great wealth that we might hope for, the, the biggest house, the best car. It's not about that, but it's about that he will get us through the rivers, through the fires, through the difficulties of life. And we should stop and remember. So this morning we remember what God has done for us. I, I found this quote from Martin Luther. I saw, thought it was so important or so pertinent to go with this lesson from Scripture. It says, We should learn to remind ourselves of Christ's victory. In Christ, we already have everything that we need. We live only to spread the message of victory to other people. With our words and example, we tell them about the victory that Christ secured for us and gave to us. Christ, our victor, accomplished everything. We don't need to add anything to it. We don't need to wipe away our own sins or try to conquer death and the devil. Everything has already been done for us. We're not fighting the real battle. We're only suffering now in order to share in Christ's victory. By Martin Luther. Now we know why he was the, the great reformer. He had very wise words to say and give to us. It's not about us. It's about the one who gave everything to us. One more reminder, and it's, it's really pretty simple. 
The, the thief on the cross. On one side of one side of Jesus, one who who basically badmouthed Jesus, came against him. And then on the other side, man says, Leave him alone. Then he said to Jesus, He said, Will you remember me? And you know what? God remembers you. And this is the assurance. One incident of of contact with Jesus. One time only it took. One moment. And he said, well, you remember, remember me. And we can say that to our God. Remember me. And Jesus replied, I do. I assure you. I tell you. I tell you the truth. The one who is truth. Today, you're with me. Forevermore in paradise. We love those passages, don't we? The simplicity of that. No preacher got to mess those words up. And the truth in it. And I give you those words this morning in truth. Holy Communion celebrates that. We had Holy Communion last week, but that's another meal of remembrance that we take with us. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the cup, he said this. After the supper, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. What? In remembrance of me. That's that contact with God through Jesus, through His Son, who is God. Remember, I started off this morning sharing some of the humor of our lack of memories, but, but one thing that we can be assured of, God never forgets us. And He chooses to remember our sins no more when we come to Him. I offer you that this morning. Thanksgiving, that we have a God who loves you that much. Will you receive Him into your heart? Will you live with Him in your life? Knowing that there's a great future ahead. Let's pray. God, we're thankful for Your Word. Thankful for Your love. And we remember Your faithfulness this morning. Just as these men and women crossed over the Jordan and took a time out and paused in remembrance, we do that this morning. Look back. Yeah, every moment you were there. As we pray through the presence of your Holy Spirit this morning, right now you are with us. It excites us about the future, knowing that you've already have gone ahead of us. So we give you praise and thanksgiving this morning through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.